Hey everybody, I'm Kevin Killian. Uh, thanks for having me here, James. And uh, James Gender, thank you for uh, you know letting me recreate your poems for my own pleasure. <laughs> and, uh, and Contextualize them any more than that. I just had to jump off a cliff and, and start doing the kind of poetry that I, I know so little about. Um, I just tried to, to, to imitate you. So a lot of the words and sentences, the structures that you'll hear are not mine, but they're uh, James Jenner. Life after death intro. I just I started with page one and I just kept going and going until the deadline came. So the little 15, 15 of them. <laughs> now I don't remember what he said and what I said, but this is, this is life after death. I used to be a poet. It must have begun, I used to be something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe I used to be dead, was that it? Do you remember? I'd rather not say. Okay. <laughs> but one day, men in white and green came in and broke into my heart like the Minutemen. I stopped writing, and the human soul went into digital foreclosure, which swells your brain, brings your soul to rain. For years, I walked with this one girl, Jane Birkin, down an artificial sand. You know that, that song of Serge, Serge Gainsbourg and her? We seemed like we fit, but we didn't. We crumpled like two Kleenex. I still want you. This isn't Gainsbourg. It's Kylie Minogue. Je ne sais pas pourquoi. <laughs> she wasn't really there. <laughs> Alone without a heart, I tried taking Bart as my masterpiece, but it ate my rodents. Here's a my version of Amazing. You heard James' version of it. Amazing. Some people have all the luck. Glowing greenly and what the fuck. A tube of boob flung up the hill in the direction of Kate Bush running. Here's for your time. But she's not all there yet. I blow it out like a birthday cake. December is my natal day. My mother, being once pregnant, couldn't stop, but asked for more. And now, a dead lady buried in Calverton, her children declare her amazing by the church. Um, and this is the poem James read with the title from Song of Myself. This is the common air that bathes the globe this is where the grass grows and the Easter grows, where I picture leaves as brief diary entries torn from my locked up secret book, high in the wind, my doctor's reports in them, my silly passions, my old autograph album. Fly away, myself, about which I once sang such songs in the trying expiration date. I was blind, like a pulley on the floor, puking. I tried every which way to convince you I was your man. I had the gifts of a tree, I swore, the heavenly tree, whose roots, roots extend, break through the leaves of grass, and inch their way into your body. I had lots to say, I just didn't know that in your future, words would lose their purchase. In the wind, bits of paper mache and gravel make grooves in your face, like a vinyl record I could spin you around in. Somewhere a needle drops, and after a bustle, a bustle of sound begins. Oh, Arthur Russell. <laughs> You would have been proud of me using voice memo last night. <laughs> they, he always liked the most sophisticated in technology that they had in the late 70s. 
They wanted a spooky story recorded to be played at a spooky house in Portland. <laughs> I told them the one where your sharp, calloused fingers woke me from a nap by my earlobe, and I was not happy. <laughs> and New York grew wings and ascended to the sky where every man and woman is a maypole. This one's called Sick, and in the original it's in quotations, Sick. <laughs> My side of the bed became, I, I, I actually wound up continuing to write more about Arthur in this poem. My side of the bed became a sweat lodge of sorts, a box of limbs and fevers strung with grenadine gren, drenched garlands. I could tell you anything when I was sick, but now that I'm all sassy and fat, I'm like a possum. <laughs> Vestigial ears and tail. When I met you at the library, you asked me, where were the books on Greece? And I misunderstood. Who's that Greek one, Plato? I gave you a course on Plato, and you just wanted to be sleek so the terrors of the world would bounce off your greasy waist, your greasy shoulders. Head girl, they call you, like a regular angel. And this, this poem is called Stronger Than Dirt. And something about it reminded me yet of another uh, uh, dead friend that I had. And he was called Jack Sharpless. And I started, yeah, I just went off. The sky drinks vaginas, plural, from your bright green basin. The sky looks at Jack Sharpless dead pet of the gay poets in the Tom Gunn, Ron Johnson circle of the early 80s. There was just one Jack Sharpless, and the Song Cave printed his final poems last year. He once measured his dick against the rails in a long gray fence of cock consciousness. He didn't have a very good looking guy, but very few pictures of him exist. And I found one on the internet, and he's there like at some kind of South American the empty lots like we used to have, with a big fence and on it some graffiti artist had written these words. Giant letters, cock consciousness, but I always thought the guy or girl who did it must have been drunk because they couldn't remember how consciousness actually ends in letters. <laughs> so just as like once you reach like U, just as like S and S and more, more so, like, the cock consciousness. <laughs> The long gray fence of cock consciousness in the photograph by Mark I. Chester I printed in my article. My own dip just long enough to nutcase the past under tinderous San Francisco sky. And this one is called Wasting My Life. Preparing our taxes, Doty called out to me, why did you give $85 to the Association of Light Boston? <laughs> and it was light as L-I-T-E. Association of Light Boston? Eventually we worked it out. It was my subscription to the Association of Literary Scholars and Critics in Boston. And they had, they had embroidered it down to fit some Twitter-sized slot. But I did like the idea of an association of light Boston, especially if light was going to be L-I-T-E. Did you realize that in her fever tour, Kylie wore seven miles of braids, cornrow interwoven with metallic strips that matched her dress fabric? It struck me full of non-presidential life. Bread, where, where do you come from? I feed you because I'm trying to stuff you up. And I photograph you because I'm on the market. Bread, where did you get your rye? From every Tom, Dick, and Harry, sir, that tried to fuck me over. And this one's called Sex Boat. James Gendron's book is, has a number of these poems with the same title, Sex Poem. 
At the playa, I stared, I stand in a circle, a grave really, the shape of the universe, and I bring my spade, the portal between the two worlds, in the piece by piece, fisting by écriture. And this is my, my queer lit class that I'm teaching. We're studying Eve Sedgwick, who you know discovered fisting by écriture in the work of Henry James. The piece by piece, and my students are like, what? <laughs> a person? <laughs> the piece by piece fisting by a couture of say the candy necklace. Four more, four more young men who were waiting in the color and the noise. I moved here to Burning Man to find a place where candy is real and my parents stayed dead. Down, dad, down, down, mom, down. Leave, not, yawn. Cloacal, coracal. Uh, James' next poem is called I Hope You Die Before I Get Old. <laughs> well, that's a joke. <laughs> the people I love died already, and while living kept me young, I grew old inside, a pocket full of spider web, a couple of ounces of it. Speak historical score. Write me no letters, only blow away fragments of dandelion, indicing some ways and means, never whole, never broken. We don't see the same thing, James. Oh, this is James Cordes. But your nipples are like silver stars, and your ass a glaze of honey. Bring it, maybe, a whole hand. Sex vote. Lately, I entertained some medical fantasies. <laughs> and one day, I saw a long gold key in the grass, and I got my shrink to insert it in my navel. There will come a time I can still see my dad say, when you realize what that hole was for, Kevin. <laughs> we were rocking on the porch, lemonade and gin and silky, wet-stemmed glass. Flowers grew smoke into my eyes. He put the key in my belly button and turned it like a little thief cracking a safe. I felt a huge relief. It was almost like my dad was standing nearby me, taking my pants down as in days of old. I came home and my wife said, you look different without your butt. Well, I guess so, I said. It fell off on the porch, and then my hour was up. I had two drinks, I told her, no more than two. And now I just really want to watch maybe one episode of Empire and Nashville, and then hit the sack, all right? And she was doting the only. And she couldn't relax with my cold reptilian eyes on her. It was like an old poem she had written in the 80s called Jane Doe. But this one's called Lost House. We have, after read this one, the real Lost House again. We have too much coleslaw. <laughs> Literally 10 pounds of it. And one of them took, I was experimenting with like a William Carlos Williams sprung rhythm here in the town. The life, one of them took the life of Cole Porter. <laughs> Night and day, he was the heart of me. Baby, remember that name? Cole. I'm talking about like, why was Cole Squaw named it Cole? <laughs> Cole, as in Porter, as in Natalie Cole, and Cole Slaw, the picnic salad with carrot chips, but where is the relational aesthetic that ties together in poetry the sides of my hands? Oh, this was because on Facebook, I, this one, you know, Facebook tells you, you should be friends with so and so, and it was this guy, Nicholas Porio, the one who invented the relational aesthetic. <laughs> First question I asked him, I said, what, what is the, <laughs> do you think if I worked hard enough, I could discover what relation aesthetics are for poetry? He says, you can work very hard on that. 
Where is the relational aesthetic that ties together in poetry the size of my hands and the names of our top pop entertainers? It is a lost house where Paris is burning in a square made of pointing fingers, you know, like this. <laughs> the house of Killian. Oh, and how about Cole in the affair? So that's the end of my lost house poem. <laughs> this one's called Best Guess. And James did this a little differently than I did, but I decided to look at just the word yes and the word it and try to end every line with the word yes. <laughs> Bring in the part on yes. On Hayes, that's line two, because Hayes has yes at the end of it. Bring, out, bring in the part on yes, on Hayes, blood funnels, the tie dies in your best shirt with the bird's eyes that people use as kites. My own yes glitters moss in the stupefaction. I'm ending from the flowers in my grave, golden eyes, on a Charlotte princess. Yes. In verse two. One may be frightening, and look, it comes to the test. At this point of spirit, I'm all about the eye color shit, for to pass the test is a fait accompli, <laughs> which when scored is wonder Fahrenheit, hotter than July. Congratulations, the lawsuit. You fulfill your college platform on the drill bit, the best yet you knit with your head and a nod. Uh, this is Wolf Water. The earth is a bitch. We finished our news. I'm lying in the rain, but I never wave bye-bye. Dr. Wolf Water, on your couch, lie with me, and using your medical diploma, finger your face for 50 minutes. <laughs> I came for my body, my aunt's body. She was six million years old when she gave dearth to you, cousin Wolfwater, in the Woody Allen film, Another Woman. Does anybody know Woody Allen, Another Woman? It's like a serious drama. Mia Farrow, Gina Rollins. How could it fail? And yet, about 10 minutes in, we nudged each other and stood, walking out, single file down the aisle, <laughs> a wedding in reverse. <laughs> Maybe this is the last one. No, I have three more. Surfing bummer. James read this one here. Surfing bummer. I'm writing an article for Arts in America about the decline, the problems of artists and writers in San Francisco. And I was at a memorial service uh, two weeks ago for David Cunningham. Some of you will remember him. He had an art gallery in Folsom Street, and the rent went up, and he closed it down. Have you read Blonde Summer by Andrew Durbin? He hired a witch to murder your boyfriend in another dimension where you had no boyfriend. <laughs> And all alone, only by yourself, you ingested the DCP, David Cunningham Projects. Its logo, a gold shield with shimmery butterfly wings for letters. When you last saw him, you didn't recognize him. A witch grabbed your desire, like a clutch bag filled with marbles, you have been told was your scrotum. <laughs> like all your life, you believed this was your manhood somehow. In which case, Angel, I have a whole stack of white wings with your name on it, and a tin halo by the looks of it. And this one is called Square. <laughs> Square is the little useful app that crucified San Francisco. That's it. Read. <laughs> read, read, read the Witherspoon. I shouted in the corridor. What are you doing here in the court of law? <laughs> I. Uh, she always plays kind of like a serious person, you know. Kevin, I have been offended by the knife in your pocket. 
square of your brain. So clever you'll cut yourself one of these days. Like a piece of old fashioned art. You know that one who made the slashes in the canvas? The Chiffon Yeah. You're under arrest in this country and China. <laughs> Did you see me in election? This is story, Switzer's story. More legally won. I was country after country was cool, but I'm in this jurisprudence mode. My mission now is to destroy all Kevins. Not just those of you who stalk the earth, but the gated ones. Beneath the surface of the dirt, with their fingers in their mouths, who lie with their knives down, one lamp in each socket, knives down. Lights out. Thank you. <laughs>